Yes, welcome along to episode four of Up in the Ante in association with Petri 65 with David Jennings and Johnny Deneen counting down to the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. Tully Hill was beaten at one to eight. First Street was beaten at one to seven. The Gold Cup winner Gallop in the Shams was beaten. Brave Man's Game was beaten. And Shishkin didn't even want to move, Johnny Deneen. It has been a mental week in the world of jump racing. And Mert Fogarty wants to know, friend of the show, you did say earlier on the series, I think it was episode one, Johnny, where you did make a big claim where you said <laughs> you're guaranteed to finish 2023 in front. Is that still the case after a tough period? No, it's there. As I said, no, that, 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 that's, that's up for grabs now again. The market's reopened anyway. Oh, I'd still fancy myself slightly, but it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a lot, it's, it, it's a lot bigger price than it was anyway. Betting you know. is no longer suspended. No, it's not. You'd okay. re, it's reopened. I'd say it's a four to five to one on chance. That's all it is now. A couple of more bad weeks now, and we'd be, we'd be, we'd be real kind flip. It could go, you know, by, by uh, Christmas. Look, as I said, you should never count your chickens in this game anyway. I should have kept my mouth shut really and said nothing. <laughs> because well, any time I ever open my mouth, it's, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, nearly always comes against me. You know? brave, it was a brave statement, Johnny, I have to say. And we're going to talk about some of those expensive losers later on in the show. But before we get on to the rest of the show, Johnny, we have to talk about David Highland. Before you were a hotshot celebrity and up in the ante and all <laughs> over the internet, uh, you were, of course, an on-course bookmaker. And now and again, you stood next to David Highland, who we sadly lost after his brave battle with cancer at the age of 67 last week. A legend. There'll be plenty of up in the ante viewers watching this that will know all about David Highland. Some won't, obviously, but he was an absolute legend of the game. An entertainer, a bookmaker, so many things. And you obviously knew him very well. Yeah, look, I, I bet alongside him, I'd say, three or four tracks. And I, I used to enjoy betting alongside him. Lots, lots of bookies didn't like betting on Sonny because he, he took a lot of the business. You know, he, 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 did, a, he did a massive... Like me being next to you in a night <laughs> yeah, show, Johnny, and all the women know. looking at you no, and none I'd of them say, looking at me. I'd say that'd be unlikely. But anyway, I... I um, Look, I like betting alongside him because you could see what was happening, who was betting with who, and who was who was doing what, and that kind of stuff. And it didn't bother me if he was taking my business from from the bookmaking side of it because that wasn't that important to me anyway. A lot of you the time. You were learning. But yeah, like it, as I said, no. If you really want to be a bookmaker, he wasn't really the man to be alongside because he, he took a lot of business out of the ring. You know what I mean? He did a huge percentage of the overall business. He did a lot of it. Like he delayed some of the biggest bets ever struck. I'd say wow. at the races. Yeah, massive. He was, but he, but he was a man like of. of a, a, a huge intelligence mm. and a man of a, a integrity, a, a empathy, I'd say, even towards punters because he liked punters. You know what I mean? He was a, kind of a, a punter himself, more than more, maybe more so than a, a, a like a, a died in the wool bookmaker mm. as such. You know what I mean? Mm. So he wasn't av averse to taking a, the odd chance himself. You know what I mean? And uh, but uh, oh, he was a great character and a very clever man too. That you could you could like if you were there arriving for an hour before race. He could talk to you about any subject, like, and he'd know what he was talking about too. Whereas a lot of I, I wouldn't know a lot about what he was talking about. And they're a clever family, actually. His brother, who he was Clark from, I had to turn around one day and he was reading a book. It was in French. Wow. Yeah. So like he, spoke, he speaks loads of different languages. Does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Francis speaks very well as well. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I'd say they're a clever family now. But uh, David was like, look, you could be talking about him until the cows come home. What, yeah. what a what a what a great guy he was. Yeah. Absolutely, what a character, and he would be sadly missed. And condolences to all. Highland family but now it's time to get on with the rest of the show so as always here on Up in the Ante we kick off with our questions from the crowd and if you've got a question for us send it in to up in the ante at racingpost.com if you've got a question you can type it out send it in to us or if you want to appear on the show your video can appear on the show it's up in the ante at racingpost.com and the first question this week comes in from Jeremy Duffy and Jeremy says Johnny out of all the mad stuff that's happened over the last week what was the one result that shocked you most? Look, I, I suppose that some of the stuff I wouldn't have done as mad at all. I mean, I wouldn't, you, I mean, like, sh okay, Shishkin standing at the start was probably mad, but like, you wouldn't, you could entertain him getting beaten, but Tully Hill getting beaten, what I would have said was, was a major shock. Yeah. I mean, I, I looked at the betting the, on the previous night, that he was, I think he was two to seven. I said to myself, like, seven. Oh, I can't get on the night before anyway, but, 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 I would have, I would have backed him at two to seven. Yes, of course I would. Yeah, I would. No, I wasn't interested in one to six or one to seven, one to eight. I would be bothered with that. But but that is a bit too tight now, to be fair. But but uh, I was saying like two to seven. That looks a gift, doesn't it? It's fine it on the ground, isn't it? Two to seven. I mean, it's, it, it's a stone wall, isn't it? And like the way he the way he uh, went out, he beat twenty four lengths. That's a long way yeah. for an eight eight to one on shot, and, and didn't jump great with. And he had point to point experience. So so the whole performance is the the winning distance is baffling. The performance is baffling, it's, and and this, like they won at Mullins, is like okay, they didn't win many races and punched on Sunday, but they won a lot of races over the weekend at the same time. Mm. So 
I, I don't know where you're going. Like as regards a Cheltenham candidate, like that puts him out of the wash. Would you ever back that horse again? I'd be slow, yeah. I'd be slow on the back of that anyway, yeah. Yeah, I would. I mean, I mean, I, I, as regards um, as regards being a grade one horse, like you'd, you'd have to say he he's very much a busted flush. Well, I said that last year about horses too, and, and the only thing I would say, there are about three horses that stick out to me in, in the last couple of years that have come from, like Shishkin was one. Um, uh, what's that other one? Um, Shishkin, there was... Um, Augusta Rodin was a horse that came back from the brink. Oh, yeah. Aidan O'Brien. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, these are the ones that yeah. you've written up. Oh, I didn't yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. And, and um, Fast Side Vega was a horse that came back. Yeah. But this performance here now will test anyone to get him back to, to, to being a great... Like, t- I, I'm, I'm not... Bob so- Ballinger. Bob, well, Bob Ballinger's only halfway back, halfway isn't he? Like, yeah. Right. Well, I suppose he's come back for some semblance of form. But, like, this guy here now looked... As regards like winning it, if you backed it with Cheltenham, you'd definitely be thrown in the bin, I think, anyway. Okay, so that was your biggest shock. I think so. It, w- it was the shortest price, and it would say the biggest shock, too. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Out of all the mad stuff that happened last weekend, Jeremy, it's the performance of Tully Hill, which shocked Johnny Denny most of all. Our second question this week comes in from Liam Dunn, and he wants to know, Johnny, do you buy into the theory that a Gold Cup leaves a mark on horses? How can this be the case? When the horse in question is running eight or nine months after the Gold Cup, is it mental or is it physical? And Liam reckons it's just an excuse. Discuss. Yeah, look, I've I, I seen this being be coming up there the last few weeks, and I, I wouldn't agree with that. I think it's a, you're, you're talking about the, the the individual constitution of a, of, of, of a race horse as such. It, it will affect some horses, and it, and it, and it's, 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 it won't affect others. Okay, it's a punishing race, admittedly it is, but you, you don't have to go back that far. Like, Album Photo won two and was third in three back to back. Best Mate won three Gold Cups in a row. Um, Cato ran in six in a row, did he? Did he run in? But, but I'm even, like, even that, that famous picture where Long Run, Cato, Starr, and Denman are jumping the, the second last together, the three of them. Like, them horses ran in numerous Gold Cups and performed in, every, in each and every one of them. Even a Plutard, okay, he bombed out last year, but he was second the year before and then he won. Mm. Um, so what is it? Oh, what is it? Why has Gallop and the Champs been beaten in one to two and looked a pale shadow of himself, a punch down in April and again a punch down in November? Why is Brave Man's game now being beaten three times since the Gold Cup? What is the reason? I, for I, it? Are I, they just not that good? I thought there was a huge overreaction to, to Gallop and the Champs not, not winning in, in, in Punchestown anyway. Like, or, not, or not winning in, in, in um, Punchestown, la, the last, not, not the festival, the, um, the, the race under John Durkin. Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, yeah, exactly. I thought there was a huge overreaction. got there in the end. Yeah, exactly. I thought there was a huge overreaction to that. Like, what's he beat? A C- couple of lengths after jumping like a kangaroo for the first <laughs> six or seven fences, didn't he? Like, you know what I mean? You never see hearts to jump as bad as him for a gold cup horse, yeah. I thought, anyway. He was horse, up, that was such a brilliant job. Yeah, but like, it's, it's always the same. You, you put in horses in behind horses and they'll make mistakes. You put him out in front and he'll jump every fence like a stag. That's, sure, every, anytime he made a run, he jumped in like, like Arkle was jumping fences. But there is one thing I think about, about this, this argument is... Oh, here we go. Here th- we go. Are you ready, re- ladies and gentlemen? My, my reading of this thing is, if a horse doesn't get the trip properly in Cheltenham, it'll leave a mark. Oh. So for the likes of Brave Men's Game, mm. I think a few others know, Lost in Translation, it was never the same again because yeah. he didn't get three and a quarter miles. Sir de Champ was another horse who yeah. didn't really, couldn't really perform, um, and Might Bite is another. Might Bite, yeah. There's four horses who didn't get to see out the distance, and it's like when you go into the the the, the red zone, it's it's and and you and you don't have the the, the stamina the stamina for it, mm. then it'll leave an effect. Okay. It, it, it's it's all about the constitution. Look, put it this way: if if you go into if I go into pub with you, say we have five points each, right? You'll go on to the next pub. I'll be inside next in an emergency. You can know where I am. Do you know what I mean? Because because I can't drink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah but do you know what I'm saying? So it, it's all about like can what hardship can an individual horse take? Mm. Because and that's basically it. But I don't see a, any horse that'll get the trip properly. I don't see it having a major effect on him at all. But if a horse is hurting, to, like Brave Men's Game is walking up to the line last year, like I, I back. Dad maybe clamped his elbow to that as well. Didn't he? he was, yeah, yeah, probably. But 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 what I'm saying is that. There, like there were, there were horses back along the like wayward lad who just couldn't get up the hill either. But One they, man, but they yeah. did win races afterwards. Mm. But I just think nowadays there are horses like I remember back in Sturdy Champs and he was on memory, like going to the line in 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 the, in the Gold Cup and mm. he looked a winner like all yeah. the way around you. You couldn't but that was Bob's work, yeah. Yeah, Bob's work, but like Bob's work outstanding. But like, he was like, do you don't remember that race? Remember you these guys that come into the um, in, into the stadium in the Olympics? 
and they don't know where they are. Like they yeah. need in the marathon. Oh, That's yeah. what like Sir Sir the yeah. was like going to like could not walk. And and my point, every one of those horses had stamina limitations. If a horse will get the trip, I don't think it'll have any major effect. Johnny, you've made a very valid point there. Thank and you. just to finish up then, okay. So are you not overly concerned about Gallop and the Champs then? Because we know he stays. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, Gallop and the Champs, like, he was 4-9 to nine to 4-7. to seven. Like, There was a bit of a, a stink off him in the betting too, like, you know what I mean? I, I guarantee you he wasn't 100% primed. I, I wouldn't be writing Gallop and the Champs off or anything like it yet. And tell me this, would you prefer to back Gallop and the Champs at 2-1 to one for the Gold Cup before he ran in Sunder, or would you prefer to back him now when he's 3-1 to one or 7-2? to two? Well, I wouldn't have backed him before or, or no, but, but like, I, I do think that... He's probably reasonably priced now at the same time, yeah. I wouldn't like to be laying him at 7-2 to two anyway. Like, I think that, what did he do? What did he get beat? He got beat two and a, in a two and a half mile race, he got beat about two lengths. Mm. And then f- five out of six of the horses, it was a funny race too. And like, they, they, they wanted to win the race, obviously. Okay, Martin Brazel came in and nipped them with, with, with the other one, um, Faster Slow. Mm. Like, put it this way, we, 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 the next time him and Faster Slow meet, no matter, what, no matter what distance is, what track, I don't care where it is, he'll be inside fast and slow in the betting, won't he? Of course he will. But will he beat him? I, I wouldn't know. It's a tight one now. Okay. It's a tight one. Like fast and slow, a very good horse too, yeah. Okay. But I certainly wouldn't be ruling him out now. No, no, no way in the world would I rule him out. I think he won a Gold Cup last year when everything went against him and he still was able to win it. Mm. And if, uh, he'll be back. I wouldn't be ruling him out at all anyway. Okay, so he's not a bust of flutch. Gallop of the Shams but will be back. I would be worried about Brave Men's game going forward though. Gone. I wouldn't like him now. I wouldn't like him. He's had two hard races and 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 they'd say the Gold Cup run they like, could affect him all right more so. Could he win a Ryanair? He won't go to Ryanair though. Okay. I think when you have a Gold Cup horse, you'd stick with the Gold Cup. Do you not know? Okay, maybe. I, maybe so. I don't know. Maybe he will. Okay, there maybe. you go. He could miss Cheltenham altogether, couldn't he? Go for the ch- go to entry. He could. Of course yeah. he could. Yeah. yeah. We've covered a lot of ground there, Johnny. It was yeah, a very good okay. answer. So there you go. That was Johnny's reaction to the run of Gallop and the Shams and Brave Man's Game and whether the Gold Cup has left a mark on them. Next question this week comes in from Basher Watts, Basher, a good friend of the show, and he wants to know which festival favourite is actually a bit of value, Johnny, and will actually go off shorter than he or she is at the moment. So a festival favourite that's a little bit of value. I would have thought um, Gaelic Warrior for the Turners, 4-1. Yeah, one. I was so tempted to put him up today. Yeah, look, I wouldn't blame you. I was, I would, if, I, if I had to put up a horse this week, that would have been the one, yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. Um, I think four to one is big odds. Big odds. Like on, on what he achieved there last Sunday, or so- Saturday actually, Saturday. Um, geez, there, there was some woe factor to what he did at the same time. I, I know that he got a solo, but he, but they couldn't go with him at the same time, could they? Like they just couldn't. And like the, that was like cool survivor, senior chief. I know the way you're thinking. Like they'd be shoe ins to win novice chases most most tracks. Like mm. and this this fella was a fence ahead of him, jumping away, like doing 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 half speed against him. I even afterwards listened to Willie Mullins. He, he was heading down the Turners Road. Anyway. Oh, it was to me. I was there. It was a punch town on, on on Saturday, and to me, it was galloping the Shams all over again. Where where Gaelic Warriors won over three miles as a novice hurler. Yeah. We kind of automatically think he'll be going definitely Brendan mm. advisory. But it's 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 Turners. He was like, I I'm not keen to step up to three miles now. I'd say he'd go to Limerick at Christmas, will he? That would look the ideal race for him. Yeah, well, if they keep if they want to keep him at two and a half miles, I suppose that'd be it. Yeah, that'd mm. be it. Yeah, that would be the race for him, is right. Yeah, mm. that would be. But just uh, everything Willie was saying suggested to me two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. I don't want to be stretching this horse out over three miles, given yeah. the way he races. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because he is an exuberant horse, but like it, once he doesn't like jump mad out to his right at Cheltenham. He, he, there's no offers, is there? Like in this race already, I think. Well, the only horse I'd be afraid of is in the pocket. I'd feel he, he will go to, for, the, for, the, for the article. Yeah. L- looking at the bet, and I don't see much in it now all of a sudden. And, and uh, like, geez, it, it, was a, it was an awesome performance, mm. though, to be fair. Like, I, I, as I said, he did, get an, he, get, did, he did get it easy, but even the pacemaker couldn't even keep him going for only about three or four fences. Like, you know? And there's people, you see, obviously, on Twitter, and Johnny, you're on Twitter like I am, and you see these people crabbing the performance, saying he did so much wrong, he got low with his, low with his fences, and you know, he made him a few mistakes, he went to his right, he did this. But after all that, it was still, it was still wow. It was still, he, he took good horses out of their comfort zone. And he's going to do that at Cheltenham. He's going to take a really good horse out of their comfort zone. And like you, I could see him being clear coming down the hill and game over. Oh, I would have thought so. He could, he could, he could, he could jump. If he gets an, into a rhythm and, and, and gets into the lead, maybe halfway down the back straight, he can jump the fences and the wings, can't he? It won't matter. Has he the potential to be one of the best horses in training? Yeah, right now he has. Yeah, of course he has. Like, but but um, 
the one thing I can't figure out how did he get beaten in, 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 the, in the Fred Winter. It's good by, to see you've got over it now. Yeah, and then, I know, yeah. By Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Did Harsley. you back him that day? I did, I did, yeah. I did. But anyway, um, no, he, 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 did, he set down the marker anyway, didn't he? Yeah. In, in, it, was a, it was as good a novice chase victory debut or whatever you like to call it as you'd ever see in my opinion okay there you go so basher it is of course gaelic warrior who is the one festival favorite that johnny Deneen thinks might be a bit of value right now and our fourth and final question this week comes in from julianne o'reilly and julianne my dear you are getting your money's worth out of johnny Deneen, let me tell you because there's a lot in this question johnny okay so if you were having a max bet on a horse ideally who would you like to train it who would you like to ride it and what type of a race would it be in? Okay. Yeah. And at what track? Okay. So there we go. So you're having your max bet. You really <laughs> fancy a horse. Who do you want to ride it first of all? Look, I, I suppose the, the key to, in that question is 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 like the the track and, and okay. Make, we will go the. It we'll, makes a big okay, difference. We'll, we'll, we'll pick look, the track and the race first of all. Okay. So no, what's the track? No. I, 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 what I would say is there are about said just said the five probably. Best combinations in, in, in Ireland and okay. England. Henderson de Bonville, Cobden and Nichols, Blackmore and the Broomhead. The Broomhead. Yeah, that's what I call him, the Broomer, yeah. The Broomhead, right? <laughs> okay. The Broomhead. Um, Mullins and, and uh, Townend. Townend and Elliot and Kennedy, right? Okay. The one thing that the five of those fellas have in common anyway is that they're proactive on ones and maybe in a maiden. I'll go for a maiden hurdle with you for starters. Oh, okay? maiden, oh, yeah, right. without a shadow, yeah. Okay, maiden, maiden hurdle. Maiden hurdle, okay? So you could pick any one of the five of them, right? But somebody's like. Some of these races, like they could be in place like Nace, where it could be competitive. So I'm going to go for a race with a lack of competitivity. Okay. Okay. Is that like a word, that yeah? one? It is. Okay. It is. I think it is. So okay. I'm going to go with. Two six or more next. No, I'm go going on. to go with um, Nichols and Cobden. Oh, I wasn't a, expecting that. On a maiden hurdle, horse in Taunton. Wow. Because once you jump the first hurdle, you can go up to the counter. It's over. Yeah. Once he jumps the first hurdle in front, cleanly on a horse. It's absolutely good night and God bless. Yeah. Whereas the other fellas are, could be running, there could be something in those races. Yeah. There's very little in races in Taunton. Mm. Like y you would you would be naked laying favourites belong to Nichols in Taunton in my eyes yeah. anyway. And it's funny that you actually say that. The minute you said that, you can just think, you just see, you can well, see so be many up, horses winning. You can be lining up in front, yeah. he runs down to the first hurdle about 40 miles an hour, whatever they go, and yeah. he pings it and you're saying, yeah, this is over. Game over yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'd go with that if I was going well, for a match. Well, Johnny didn't have to say that was a 200 to 1 shot in my book. <laughs> right. I was expecting you to be in, in probably Pudges Town with Willie and Paul Town. And it's Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden, okay? It's a maiden hurdle and it's at Taunton. If Johnny was having his max bet. Have you joined the Racing Post Members Club yet? Have you, Johnny? Yeah. You have? Absolutely, okay, that's okay. Yeah. Well, if you haven't, guess what, Johnny? What? You'll never guess this. There's 50% off the first three months. Yes, 50% off the first three months if you join the Racing Post Members Club. It's performance of the week time here on Up in Yanti, where Johnny Deneen counts down his top three performances of the last seven days. So take it away, Johnny. Number three. N number three, I went with Halke de Tabert in Cork in a mirror's novice chase. Um, did everything right. Trip suited a 2 5, ground perfect. Again, popped out in front, made the running. Never a moment's worry bearing a, a, an accident from, from very early in the race. You couldn't have enough on it anyway. Uh, but did everything right. Never even looked like falling. They jumped pinpoint accurate. And I, I did say it here a couple of weeks ago that the one fear for backing something like Dino Blue is a novice and this is her. Oh. Yeah. Like is if, she that good? Oh, uh, I think so. Oh. I think so. On soft ground, it says she'd be very, very dangerous, yeah. Oh, right. Like she has a good run in Cheltenham last year, over two miles on, in that Mayor's Novice sort of finish, 100 yeah. mile an hour. And, um, like, I don't see anything in, against Dinah Blue from, 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 from the, the second season novices, but I, I would be like, like novices fought the race out last year. So um, I, I would be afraid of her now, yeah. Uh, and, would you be more afraid of, of Halka de Turbert than Allegory de Vassi? Well, definitely. Wow. Definitely, yeah, definitely. What sort of price is she now for the Mayor's oh, She's big double figures, but there's a chance she may not run in it, maybe. Yeah. She could run in it, maybe. And she's open to a loads of different races. She might even go there, I don't know. But I, I would be afraid of her now, yeah. I thought her, 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 her uh, performance was really impressive, really impressive. Okay. And um, now it's saying that it, it did get 
soft lead and did get things in his favour. And you never really know how good horses are until they come put them in behind horses. But like sh she's very useful anyway. It's very impressive down there. Okay, so number three is Halka to Turbert. Number two. Number number two for me was Predators Gold. It won a maiden hurdle in, on the Saturday. Um, a punch is saying, it yeah. punches are well backed, and it was one I didn't back. And f about two or three out, I was saying to myself, I'm, I'm glad I'm not on this. I thought so, watching the race. Yeah, too. I, and it, it kind of hit this third last, and I said, One more mistake, and this is beat. And it, it did, I did the same at the second last. And I said, Yeah, oh, thanks be to God, I didn't back this thing anyway. You know, we had a feed, and it wasn't much good, you know what I mean? <laughs> and say, About 100 yards later, I was saying, My, my God, look at this coming. And it just like went into a different gear that these other horses didn't mm. have. And the one thing, the thing I like about now, it finished with Gusto at one in the walk in the end, absolutely bolted in. Mightn't have been the world's worst race either. But the thing I like about it is, it won a bumper in Punchestown, and there was no money for it really. It was, four, it was like a fight to out to four to one shot. And they said afterwards that like, it was only ready to start off, and they were only throwing it in there because it was mm. quite a qualified. Like, it, it has no point to point experience or nothing like So there's oceans of improvement to come in. Mm. Like, I'll be gobsmacked if Mullins has three better novices than that horse anyway. Gobsmacked. Ooh. Like I would rate him a better prospect for the Ballymore now than Ballyburn even. Predators Johnny, gold. That's a big claim. Well that's that's the way I'd be thinking now. I, I don't rate Ballyburn myself actually. Oh. I don't actually. He's one horse I, I think is overrated. I, do you know what? I know it was beat the other day and I thought it was a Sir Tully Hill, but it was another horse I wasn't mad about for as regards the Cheltenham horse. And I'd be the same with Ballyburn. This thing though is is like the amount of untapped potential here is massive and uh, like I'd say he'll go for the Lawless and it'd be hard to beat the two. Wow, that's your biggest claim so far in the show, I think, Johnny. No, the Predator's uh, goal is a better horse than Ballyburn. Well, he's, I think he's up there with him anyway, at mm. least. I think he, I, 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 I could even go by him maybe sometime. Yeah, it's interesting because I know Henry Romet does think a lot of Ma Mossy Van Park, who finished second as well. Yeah. And did a lot wrong as well, Mossy Van Park. He'll be a better horse next time. He I probably think. will, but there was no second though, was there? No. Like, there, was, no. there was only one horse to take out that race and that was him, I thought. Okay, so Predator's goal, who Johnny has spoke glowingly about, is number two. There must be some number one if he didn't make number number one, Johnny. Well, we so who was your number one performance of the weekend? Was we spoke about Gaelic Warrior already, and, and I couldn't really ignore it. Yes, um, it it was it was like a it was a one in kind of a ten year performance. I thought like a, a, a novice chase performance. Anyway, it was one that you'd say like really take your breath away. I know the so esque type of it, thing. It remember? was yeah, it was like like you were looking back and seeing like the likes of Senior Chief, and you no, know, I know the way you're thinking, and, and like. That has the cool survivor. I mean, that went up to um, Liquilixias. Like mm. it wouldn't be, that wouldn't be bad type mm. of horse. Like, and, and next thing you're saying, like, what's going on here? How is he? How is he so far ahead of them? But um, it's just look. It was like it, there was a, a, a wow factor to it, wasn't there? Like that, oh, yeah. that you wouldn't see too often. Maybe I doubt if it's a one-off either. I doubt if it's a one-off. I'd say the fact that they skipped, they didn't bother going for the stairs hurdle. They must have thought like this horse would win all around them over fences. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that he's better than the stairs hurdle horse even. Like I'd say they're they're thinking Gold Cup horse, aren't they? Like definitely, without a doubt. Yeah, I spoke to an on course bookmaker on Saturday, Brian Keenan, uh, Junior, and he said this horse is a monster. I like, think he's so going too. racing yeah, yeah. every day of the week, and he just yeah poked his eye. Like in. you just wouldn't see performances like that too often. That's my eyes. Anyway. I, I I like I couldn't but put it in at number one. Okay, so there you go, Gaelic Warrior Johnny's early fancy for the Turner's Novice Chase is also his performance of the week. Eye catcher of the week time on Up in the Ante where Johnny Deneen tells us the one horse who caught his eagle eye over the last seven days and it is... This was easy actually, would you believe it? It was that? easy? It was, yeah. I, I, where did I, that I, run? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, it was an easy choice, I okay. mean to say, yeah. Um, the horse I went for is Stafford Shire Knott. Never heard of him. He, run, he ran in Cork on, right. on, on, on Sunday in the maiden hurdle that Reed and Tommy Rong won. Oh yes. Uh, Liz Nagara Fortune was second and mm. he was third, walk away Harry was fourth. Like when you when you put it into context, Reed and Tommy Rong is a jewel bumper winner. Mm. Liz Nagara Fortune and Walk Away Harry had won bumpers in mm. Punchestown. So like it was no Muggs race. And this guy, his boy Shan too, was a five year old. Who trains him? Gordon Elliott for, for um the red and white colours, the oh, mighty Potter well. colours. Yeah, exactly, mm. yeah. And um like he'd never run anywhere, ever, yeah. ever before. You get the feeling that somebody in the yard knows this is a tool and he's working well. Okay. Okay. Now, okay, he would have been the stable neglected against Stiller Story and probably wouldn't have got involved in that race. But he, he was he wasn't completely friendless down Cork and he he wasn't given a hard ride either. And he would take some whacking next time he runs. He'll, it, it'll take a real, real good horse of Mullins to beat him in the maiden hurdle next time. Okay. Could we see maybe a Christmas, maybe a Leperson? You, you could, but if he turned up, in, do you know where he could, can, could turn up? Like he can turn up in a place. 
like Limerick where you get the, the winner's penalties. Mm. I think the, you, you get the eight pounds for not winning a race. Okay. Like you you could put the Eiffel Tower on them down there, anyway, <laughs> in my opinion anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like Leperstown, the, 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 the bumper winners don't have to give away the eight pounds. Yeah. Whereas in Limerick, I'm almost certain that okay. they do. And like if you turn up in a place like Turles or one of those places like that, you could, I don't know yeah, what he's you He's a good do. horse. Oh, I think so, I think so, yeah. Okay, give, give them the name again, Staffordshire Knot. Staffordshire Knot. Staffordshire Knot, the biggest eye-catcher probably of the series so far then, Johnny? I think so, yeah, I think, okay. he's, I think he's the making of a very good horse, actually, yeah. There you go, put him in your notebook. Staffordshire Knot, who was third at uh, Cork on Sunday, is Johnny the Neans, eye-catcher of the week. It's time for what's happening this week and we have got grade one action all over the place. So we have, we've got the return of the King. Constitution Hill runs in the Fighting Fifth Hurdle at Newcastle on Saturday and we've got the Royal Bond, the Dream Moor and the Hatton's Grace Hurdle at Ferry Hills on Sunday. It's going to be a big couple of days, Johnny. We're going to kick off with the Johnny Frankham Novices Chase and the return of Herme Allen, who you didn't join the fan club last year at any stage. Unfortunately, I did. And they didn't get great value for joining that fan club. Um, you stayed away, and you're not convinced by this horse at N- all. No, I'd be staying away this year too. I think, yeah. I didn't like the fact that, that when we were we were in Ditchie, he said that he wasn't the big horse. Mm. Now, saying that, he's going to Newbury first time, which is a good test of a novice yeah, chaser. That third last. That's like a wall, isn't it? That thing, yeah. Unbelievable. The, the, biggest the, fence in the history of the world. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's um. So th- they must be happy with his jump and be going there. Um, but if, if, if he's not a big horse, I, I'd be worried about him. And I don't just don't think he's that good anyway, for starters. Now, this isn't a vintage race, but you, what you have in this race is you have Nickelback will go from the front, tighten your belt will be going from the front. So there's going to, he's not going to get a soft lead anyway. Soft, like, he's, he's not going to get a soft lead in front. Yeah. So he's going to have to do things right in behind a few horses. And the one I was going for was Marble Sands, who won a, a reasonably good novice chase was it an air or Newcastle? I'm not even sure. It was up the north anyway. And that was only over two miles. Um, he beat a horse called Paris Encore, belonged to Nicky Richards. Mm. In, in, and like Marble Sands, like, actually Marble Sands finished, a, I think, a nose in front of Hermie Allen in the... Um, in, 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 in the main tree? No, in the Ballymore. On the Ballymore. Last year. I think they were fifth and sixth. Okay. Now, one of them was three, the one was 150, the one was the same thing. But still, Marble Sands is not a bad horse. And if he can get into a jump and rhythm behind him, there will be there will there will be a bit of pressure on the lead here, and I, I could see Hermes Allen struggle. I'd be opposing Hermes Allen fairly. Like he's eleven to ten. I think he's a horrific price. 11 You're going to be laying him. I'd be opposing him anyway. I can't lay loser though. That's why I might I might I'll back something to beat him anyway. Or something like that, yeah. Okay. But uh, no, I, I I wouldn't have him anyway. No. You I'd say you can't lay a loser. What you can't lay above evens? Is that what? No, you're I saying? can't lay losers. They don't have to be evens either. They, oh. I just ca- I cannot. Lay a loser at the moment. Oh, yeah. So it's just your luck. Yeah, that's not. Oh. It's nothing to do with luck. No, I don't think. I just think you, anyone laying horses is very difficult. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was just a philosophy. Or something no, no, like no. Okay. I just. It's. I find it hard to lay okay. losers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. So it's Marble Sands for Johnny in the Johnny Frankham Novices Chase, and we've got the long distance hurdle on Friday, which is always a cracking race. But this year, it's just not a cracking race. No, it's an ordinary race. Yeah. Marie's um, Rock. Marie's Rock, like bad a blip in the mares. Hurdle at Cheltenham, like there's n- absolutely no betting in this race, is there? Like you know, her run in Cheltenham, or in Aintree makes her a winner. Uh, her run in Cheltenham is the only one, the only little um, n- negative. But Dashiell Drashers and 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 what's the Paisley Park? One is rising twelve, one is rising eleven. Yeah, and the other three ca- don't count. No, it it looks Marie's rock out. Like I thought, four to six is very very fair. That anyway. Yeah, like well, it, it, it looks a good thing to me. Anyway. She's a player in the stairs hurdle, isn't she? She's a chance, that's all though. Okay. I mean, she's a chance. I mean, I, uh, her run last year in the Mears, I, I backed her in that Mears hurdle last year. She ran terrible. I, I, I thought she ran stinking in it. Like, getting beaten in, in entry, that's as good as she is, like, I think, getting beaten in entry. I, I fancy she won't win any stairs hurdle, but she'll win this though, at the same okay. time. Okay, there we go. That's Marie's Rock. Uh, moving on to Saturday, um, we have got Constitution Hill. What Can we do that with Constitution Hill here, Johnny? Would you ever contemplate back in Constitution? Ah, no, he's too sharp, but he's just actually just watching and 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 enjoy. enjoy really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I mean, what price is he going to be? Should he? he, he, could be, he could one be seven. Be, oh, I'd say he'd be shorter, won't he? Okay. I don't think you'd see Constitution one to seven anymore. Well, I'd say one to sixteen. He'd be heading for nowadays, okay. won't he? Um, yeah, look, there's no bit in the area, surely. None. Okay, we'll just enjoy Constitution Hill, one of the best horses we're going to see in our lifetime. And the big one on Saturday, Johnny, is the Coral Gold Cup. It's the old Hennessy. It's one of my favourite races of the year. I love it, I have to say. Are you big? Are you a fan? I like it, yeah. I like it. I don't bet in it that often, but um, I, I do. Like, I'd be going for a second season novice in the, in the Hennessy normally, you know. What have you found this year? 
Well, I haven't found anything that's not glaringly obvious. The front three in the betting are all se second season, <coughs> obviously. You've, you've, you've one big genius, you've um, complete unknown, mm -hmm. and you've uh, McConnell's horse, Maller, Malamission. Malamission. Yeah. Now, McConnell's horses are not going great, are they, like? No, no. What? <laughs> no, no. So, no, so that's, that, that's, that's, that would be enough of a reason not to back that. Okay, so he's gone. Yeah, complete unknown. I, they look okay, okay but second to Jerry Colomb over three miles. And did he fall in at Newton Abbott, though? He did, but I'd say he needed a run, though. Okay. He'd say he did probably, because he was weak in the bit, and then he yeah. did everything right, and he still only fell in. You know what I mean? Yeah. He jumped well and everything. Uh, like, I'm not so sure he's an out and out three and a quarter mile horse. Mm -hmm. He's some rope enough for him at three miles. Okay, it was second to Jerry Clam in the entry, but there was no second to Jerry Clam in the entry. No. So uh, I'd go with um, John Joe's horse. Man, uh, big genius. Man, big genius. Crack and run in the ultimate. Yeah, that farm would be very, put him very, very in really having a great chance of winning. Well, you're very, talking about two Gold Cup contenders in Cora Tram, yeah, fast or slow, yeah. You are, and I that was a cracking effort, is right, yeah. And I'd go with him. He's running Carlisle, even though he was pulled up, he was going to be grand until he started making a few mistakes, and the horse jumped into him at one stage as well. I, I, I'd ignore that. I, I, I think I'd chance him. Um, he'd be the one I'd go for any of the. And there is a lot of dead wood in this race, too. I'd, at Ascot, uh, Mumbai Genius. Did he run at Ascot? Was it Ascot or Carly? Where did it was Ascot. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was Ascot, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah, look, I, I, I'd go with him. I'd go okay. with him, yeah. I, I'd uh, Johnny, I have two words for you, okay? And I want you to think about these two words very carefully, okay? Ahoy, senor. Yeah, I look. Uh, He's dangerous in this race. His performance at Newbury as a novice was spectacular. That was it one was, of the yeah. wow ones, okay? It was, actually, Newbury yeah. is made from, the trip is made from, yes, he's running off 169, he has to give lumps away. But is he giving lumps away to really good horses? I'm not sure, I'm not sure, when you mentioned a couple there that are decent horses, but is there any other grade one horse or nearly grade one horse in the race? There's definitely not. And mm. he's, when he's, when he's good, he's very good. Now, when he's bad, he's deplorable. Well, I, I think you kind of like it. You're nearly like a den man to carry top weights in races like this, though, don't you? Like I think, yeah. like he's a he's a, he's. A, he's but Demon was running against what a friend who ran in Grade Ones continuously afterwards. Like I don't think there's Grade One horse in this race. Yeah, maybe not. But like a high senior to come. Okay, he, he runs poorly every first race. Mm. And that was look, particularly. Uh, the yeah, problem, look, he used to do everything right jumping wise too. He's, there's a, there's a, there's a mistake in him as well, isn't there? Like mm. if he does anything wrong in the fence here, he's gone. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. And on top of that, I, Lucinda Russell's horse has gone off the boil ever so slightly too. Maybe not in the Mc McConnell Bowl, but they're definitely not winning as many races no. as they were. I, I would be against a horse that has, has the level of experience that a high senior has in my book. And, he, okay. and like 169, whatever he's 169, I wouldn't be fencing myself, no, but okay. I might be wrong. Fair enough. Moving on to Fairy House on Sunday. Three grade ones. We'll kick off with the Royal Bond. Uh, we don't know what's going to turn up at the time of filming. Anything in particular you liked in the race? Um, well, G Gilargi is a horse that, that could be anything. Mm. Um, I was trying to think what else is wrong. There was, there was a whole host of horses entered, but I wasn't sure which... which yeah, it's very hard to know what's going to run. Yeah. Down memory lane, if, if that turns up, that was one you'd, you'd, you'd be worried about. It, it'd give a good chance to at least. Um, like there was a whole host of entries in it. Mm. It's a guessing game at this stage. It is. Isn't it? it wasn't the strongest race no. of all time I'd have thought. No. Now, you know what I mean, it could be a good horse in it, but it didn't look a, a plethora of good horses. I put it that way to you. Okay. Uh, moving on to the Drimmore, I suppose we're going to have the likes of. Let's be clear about yeah, it. We'll be he, in there. Sharjah. Yeah. Who do you like? I wouldn't have Sharjah in my mind anyway. Would you not? Not on my mind. No. Give that. A we got a question from the crowd in this week. I can't remember who it was from. We didn't use it, but one of the questions from the crowd was: Is Sharjah a forgotten horse with regard to Cheltenham? Well, he should be. He should be. <laughs> I'm joking, me, but he's no chance in Cheltenham anyway. None in the world, and he won't be found in this race either. When it comes to it, in my opinion, he won't anyway. Let's be clear about it. He's very dangerous. Looks like looks like a horse that's improved over fences. Um, was his American Mike? Will he be in this? Would he be? He's, he's, yeah. yeah. I think let's be clear about it. I trust him. Found a fifty, probably. Found a fifty. Oh yeah, he might run instead of American Mike. Yeah. I think let's be clear about it, is, it has more done than them horses now. Okay. Found the 50 when he stepped up in the real good horses last year, he wouldn't found at the same time. I had something on him in the entry and okay, the ground would have gone a bit soft, but he ran bad at the same time. Um, that's the horse that I would say they have to beat at the, at the moment. These, these two runs over fences as well, which is a help okay. going in here, you know. And uh, I know Sharjah has a couple of runs over fences, but I know I know Mullins could do anything with chases and they're like he turned out classical dream who looked a, a big horse there in... Um, what a beautiful chase and debut that was. Yeah, it was fantastic, yeah. Like, he's able to do stuff now with nine and ten-year-olds that you thought weren't possible one time. 
But I do favour Classical Dream. I would have a better chance than Charger in this race than myself. Okay. No, I think okay. he, I, Charger's a horse. I couldn't I would give it that inertia to anything in Cheltenham anyway. Okay, reading between the lines, you don't fancy Charger. Moving on Not to really, no. the, <laughs> the Hatton's Grace Hurdle, which uh, used to be Honeysuckle's race. Last year it was won by Tihupu, who beat Classical Dream. This year it looks like it's going to be a corker. Imperi Pass, where are you with Imperi Pass? Is he a good horse, a very good horse, a brilliant horse? A future legend. Where is he? Could he be Constitution Hill? Well, it's very hard to say how good he is, really. Um, I could see him being vulnerable here in the in, in the Hatton's Grace. Really? Um, I could, yeah, I could. I could see either either whichever one of T. Hoop or Irish Point takes him on, give him a run for his money, yeah? You're a big Irish Point fan. Yeah, he's, yeah. well, he run here. I think T. Hoop was coming here, is he, you know? Potentially, yeah. Yeah, which, whichever one of them would give him a run. He has to step out into... Like, you don't really know how good horses are until they step out into open company, and he's never done that yet. So, kind of jury's still out. I, I think his his effort in Cheltenham was fantastic. His run in Punchestone not so not no. so good. Um, I do think he might be vulnerable first time out. So the way some of their horses have been running in that, and he, he, I don't I wouldn't back him. He's one favourite. I wouldn't back now next Sunday. Not said he can't win or anything like that, but um, he's one I, I'd be leaving alone. As as regards how good he is, I don't honestly know. I don't honestly know. It's it like. Legend of a horse, like it's it's probably safe. You, you'll probably be safe saying that he's not going to be a legend of a horse. You were safe to say you're going to finish 2023 in front of you <laughs> yeah. weeks ago, Johnny. Yeah, that's a lot true. can change in a short space of time. Yeah, that's true too. I, look, I I don't know how good he is to be honest, okay. but I'd like to see him step out in open company and s smash these horses up before I be saying he's he's going to have a chance of beating Constitution Hill anyway. Okay, so there you go. Are you going are you going to Fairy House either day this week? No, no, I don't think so. Okay. At, at the moment, I'm not oh. anyway. No, no. Oh, okay. Sunday and May is a possibility. Million to one Saturday, no. Oh, million to one Saturday. No, what well, price you for Sunday? Oh, I'd be. 13 to 2? Maybe the sevens. Okay. Seven, maybe. Okay. Well, I'll yeah. see you there if you're <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's what's happening this week. So, what you want to know now is Johnny's midweek treat. Let's try and get a winner for the midweek, Johnny. We've, we've been hitting the crossbar a little bit in the first couple of weeks, okay? So, your midweek treat, the one horse that opened the anti viewers should keep an eye on. On either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So, what day of the week is it? I'll go Thursday in uh, Thurles. I'll go Thursday with um, a horse called Reddy's Island, who, who uh, w who's running in the one fifteen on Thursday. Uh, two mile six handicap chase in Thurles. Look, he's running off ninety seven. Like, he, he, he's no superstar and like it, but it's, it's that kind of a race. So, look, he he, he ran well in Down Patrick. He ran down Royal, yeah. No, Down Patrick. And then Patrick four, four, oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, And then Down Royal, yeah. And then look, I think he's due a win. I think he's due a win, and. Um, he, he, like he, I just think that Jack Kennedy on him, he's plenty going from. He, he won't be that short. He'd be probably a five to two shot, something like that. So I was going to put up Indy Var Blue tomorrow, but he, he could be too short and they'd be throwing stones and rain stones down top of him if he was beaten. Johnny, they love you. They'll never do that. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're in the Var Blue is one you're keeping an eye on tomorrow. I, he should win, but I'd be, I'd be, I, I didn't put him up because in, just in case he's too short. You know what I mean? Okay. But this horse can't be too short because it's, it's, it's a handicap chase, whereas the other one is a novice hurdle. So. Yeah, okay. But Indy Var Blue should win tomorrow. Now. But I, I'm go, as for, for this purposes of the midweek treat, I'm going okay. to put up um, Ready's Island. Because yeah. it is a treat. Yeah, yeah it is, it a, is treat, a treat. Yeah, this yeah. is a treat. It's in the 115 of Thurless on Thursday. It's Reddy's Island. It's trained by Gordon Elliott. It's ridden by Jack Kennedy, and they're in decent enough form of late, aren't they? Ah, absolutely. I mean, Jack Kennedy's like poetry in motion in horses, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Riding fantastic and, and getting the way, just the way he gets horses to jump properly. It's, 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 it's brilliant. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. Favori de Chabdou is brilliant on, on Saturday. There you go. Johnny's midweek treat. It's Reddy's Island. The 115, Thurless on Thursday. So now it's time for DJ versus JD, our weekly charity bet competition. And the charity, the charity, there's tears rolling down their cheeks because uh, we're not exactly doing great for the charity at this stage, Johnny. You're minus 45, I'm minus 100. I had a non-runner last week, for some reason, Fontaine, Cologne, didn't run at Haydock. And your charity bet was welcome to Castro's. It was just nutted right on the line. <laughs> right. Hell of a run, though. Yeah, it ran well. Yeah, it did. It did. It it it, it did. It ran a blinder, and the, the vibes before the race were that it needed to run. Well, Nichols was saying, and at on, uh, at the races or Sky Sports Racing, or whatever, that would come on a lot for the run. So beat the batch. You didn't see that one coming. N no, no, no. Uh, no look, 
it was well back beat to bat. I mean, it finished yeah. up like six to four each two or something in around that area. Anyway, it was a good race, and you, like welcome to Cartridge had every chance in the day. Will be a nice horse, I'd say. Welcome. I'd say probably will, yeah. Okay, so what will. have you got for us this week? Fifty quid, courtesy of our good friends at Petri Six Five, is going on. I'm going to go with Insanity in the in the. I'm going to go with Topical. In, yeah, absolutely. He's he's entered in the eleven thirty five in Newcastle, so it's an early kick off Saturday. <laughs> yeah, an early kick off. Um, a three year old hurdle. Nice horse, Vad and Kings. It's his, it's his hurling debut. They don't look wonderful in it now, to be fair. And uh, he was a horse who was watching in the flat. He, he ran a blinding race in Windsor first time out. And you'd say he'd probably win next time. He ran to challenge for that all weather. It didn't really suit him. It didn't seem to win. Mm. He didn't run great. But then he, back to the grass fast last, won a race, a maiden. And then he went to York and he, he was fifth to Lordship. Like, Lordship is a good horse at the same time. Travel well, yeah, like he's an 80 something rated um, horse who was no problem, no bother with the trip. Uh, look, he, he he could be a good goodish type um, three year old hurdler. Yeah, I think it's a race. Alan King has a decent enough record in it. Has well, he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, they don't look a great bunch. If he does things right, if he can jump some way proficiently, he should win this. Okay, so that is insanity for Johnny Deneen in the eleven thirty five at Newcastle on Saturday. I'm going to Sunday the three ten at Ferry House. It's a big handicap hurdle there, and an old friend, Johnny, an old friend who I think there's one big handicap hurdle in, and it's Cur Sublime, who has turned a bit of a corner in the flat, won at Listowel and uh, was second in the Amateur Riders Derby at, uh, at the Curra last time. Travelled beautifully through that race. Now he's running off a hurdle mark of 143 here. And he could just be, now that he's put two good runs back to back, I just wonder is there one big pot in him over hurdles? And this could be it. It's at Chris Jones's local track in Ferry House, the owner. And I just thought off mark of 143. I thought he might just be better than this lot. We never really thought he was a handicapper at any stage in his career. He's been a disappointing horse over the years. He's been a brilliant horse. But mm. just what we were expecting early on, we thought he might potentially be a superstar. He was second in a triumph hurdle. But I think this could be his big day. Curse of Lime, keep the faith in the 310 at Fairy House on Sunday. Should be a bit of a price as well. So I'll stick my 50 quid on him, please. So there you go. That is our weekly charity bet competition. It's insanity for Johnny. It's Curse of Lime for me. That was DJ versus JD this week. So now, folks, it's time for the festival teams where you get to find out whether myself or Johnny Deneen are adding to our anti-post portfolios for the Cheltenham Festival next March. Johnny, are you going? No, no I'm staying put this week. No. Are you staying put? Yeah. And if I was to push you, if, I, if, if it was the old show and you had to put up a selection this week, what would you put It would have been Gaelic Warrior, definitely, yeah. yeah. Even at 4-1? to one. Oh, Gaelic Warrior ha- has the potential to go off under evens on the day, I would have thought. Um, it's very likely that, that like last year's horse was six to four on in the finish. I mean, yeah. Monkfish went off four to one on in, in, in RSA mm. or whatever it was that time. So it, these novice races can like Sir Gerhard was. I think he was short the year he won the mm. the, the Ballymore. So do, do, those novice races, can, they can throw up a skinny one. Like you know what I mean? Mm. They won't throw up in the. They're allowed ninety to bet five to feel in the air, aren't they? Like you know what yeah. I mean? When the time comes. So I think four to one is fair. Yeah, I, I think that's a good price. What stopped you from putting them up? Um, farm? No. Your no, own farm? I, 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 di- I didn't, um, but I'm only allowed 10 picks, yeah. isn't it? So I'd want to shoot me bolt that early, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're laying up. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. so there you what go. That was a p- premature pickelation, isn't it? <laughs> 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 bit of alliteration there as well, Johnny. There you go. Premature pickulation, which I'm going to suffer from now because I'm going to have my third selection this week because she's entered on Saturday at Newbury. And Johnny, learning from you a little bit here now. So yeah, I'm learning from you. You're trying to pick a race that a horse will definitely run in, mm. okay? And a, a race potentially where there's not too many contenders. And that's what I've done. Look, I'm a massive fan of Dice Ardenos, trained by Fergal O'Brien, who hasn't had a Cheltenham Festival winner yet. But I think that's going to change in March because I think Dice Ardenos is probably the best horse he's had. This is a star, this mare. Just go back to the run at, at Aintree last season and that, uh, that mare's bumper. There was good horses in there. I know the likes of Williams Tend Dancer and all that. They've been running through the summer over here. But just the way she put distance between herself and the rest of the field inside the final furlong. And again at Huntington, again her jumping was a little bit sketchy at times. She was particularly slow at one where the camera was was, fa- was kind of side on down the back straight and she lost ground on the two in front of her at Huntington. But just after the last one, Paddy Brennan gave her just a little bit of urgency. She just quickened right away. I'm going through the race and you're saying to yourself, at the moment anyway, you're talking about one, two or three horses that you could say would definitely a big, big chance in that race. Um, and to me, she just looks like she's definitely going to go there. Fergal O'Brien has said as much. 
if she wins on Saturday, she's going to be a very short price. But if she wins on Saturday, I think that eight to one with Petri six five is going to look a big price, and she could be you know five to one, eleven to two after Saturday. She's unbeaten. I think she's going to get better over hurdles, and I think she's a star. So I had to get her into my team before she ran again, and she's running at the weekend. So my next selection for the 2024 Cheltenham Festival is Dysart Enos at 8-1 to one with Bet365. That will be on the site from 6 o'clock. And fingers crossed, it's a winner, Johnny, because I need one. <laughs> right, OK, yeah, there yeah. So Dysart Enos, your thoughts on that? I know you're a big fan of the Elliot horse. Yeah, look, I'd be afraid of um, a French, some, something from France coming oh, into, into, into this market. Do you know what I mean? Why, like what? Like you just don't know what if somebody buying. You hear on something? No? no, I don't. I don't. I, I think in that race is is there something called Joyeuse in it? Is there? Jo- well, the horse that's, that's running today, before after filming at Tremor, yeah, that was beaten by Dice Artinos. No, but in that race. Oh, there's Joyeuse as well. There's Joyeuse something something. Yeah, yeah, but there's a horse called J O Y E U S E. It's a McManus Henderson horse, isn't? It? Is that in against Dice Artinos? Isn't yeah. it? Where's that come out of? Uh, that's in that's at uh, Newbury on Saturday. Yeah, but where did it come out of? It come out of the no, come out of your mouth a minute ago. Anyway. No, but it came out of France, did it? Yeah, well, but it, it but has it run in England. I don't know. Yeah, I can't place it either. Don't but ask but, me but that's questions. the type of thing you're. Oh, I'm afraid of in a race like that. That something they, they give four hundred grand for something that comes from France and pips you. You know what I mean? Like a bit like like, like Halka the Tarbert was was kind of come from from point to point. Something out of left field that could come into a, a mayor's novice hurdle. Even the, like the previous year, Dino Blue went off five to four. You know what I mean? In, in yeah. the, I know it didn't win it, but but like you, that's what you're. Up, up against, I think, in a race, when you're picking a horse like this, you'll be hoping that there's something doesn't come out of. Uh, like you have brighter days ahead to, to contend with as well. But yeah. I'd say your 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 biggest worry could be something maybe that, that, that nobody knows nothing about yet. Great, that lasted <laughs> all of ten seconds. My hope for I know, she's a good animal, of course she is. Yeah, and she has a chance, is right. But he has to get his the monkey off his back too. It's another little yeah. niggle, you know. Well, hopefully this is the monkey. It's Dice Sardinos at 8 to 1 Bet365 for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival. My third selection for the Cheltenham Festival next March. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it for episode 4 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365. Busy week ahead, Johnny. It's Christmas party season coming up now. Have you had many of them coming up? Um, one or two. One or two, oh. yeah, yeah. We won them um, Sunday evening. Okay. So... Uh, are you yeah, going to join us, yeah? You, you'll be at that. You'll I will, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. You'll yeah, be so. sick of me. <laughs> well, do you know what? You might have an old drink that night, will you? I don't know. I'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I might have. Yeah, one or two, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, anything else this week? Anything of note? Soccer matches? Uh, racing? Racing will be on the week. Sure, obviously, punches our fa- fairy house Saturday, Sunday in the, in the, in the English race. So should the race this time of year is, is cracking anyway, it's isn't it? Every yeah. weekend. You know what I mean? So there's always something to watch. I mean, last week was good too, and this week will be the same. And is it? There's a chance, there is a chance up in the anti viewers. If you are at Fairy House on Sunday, Johnny Denny <laughs> might be there. It's only a seven to one shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I know. makes you what one to eight not to turn yeah, up. Exactly. I'd say you could be safe enough betting the eight to one on is a better bet than Dully Hill anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> might be there, you never know. He no, might yeah, be there. Go well, over the eights on, yeah. I can tell you where you definitely will be. Well, hopefully. You'll be here, same time, same place next week. Yeah, hopefully. For episode five of Up in the Andy. Hopefully the midweek three comes up trumps. Hopefully we get a charity bet up. And hopefully you have a great punting week as well. I've been David Jennings. He's been Johnny Deneen. This has been Up in the Andy. Thanks for watching.